Hey, Steve Jordans again. Uh, this is the third video uh, that was related to uh, applying design thinking to educational innovation. And um, what I really want really to focus on here is a really interesting part of design thinking. So when you get when you go through the process um, uh, to a certain point, you've defined the problem. You're starting to think of innovations, innovative ideas, and you have to go through a bit of a brainstorming phase where everybody involved on the team has to. Um, come up with ideas, but then critically vet each other's ideas. So we have this situation of, of real intense collaboration, but collaboration that really only gets anywhere if you're spending as much time weeding out or at least fixing the not so good ideas as you are just generating ideas. Okay, you, you need there's, there's a philosopher named Karl Popper who was big in science uh, for saying that it's really important to falsify or to reject certain things if you ever want to proceed. And, and that requires somebody to say something that's going to make somebody else unhappy. So that's what I want to talk about here is that situation, why it can be difficult for us, uh, but how best we can effectively collaborate with others when we're in this intense design kind of context. All right. Um, First thing I like to start with, this is a, John Lennon is very famous for saying, all you need is love. Uh, I always thought that was a very nice sentiment, but I also always thought he was shooting way too high. And I think in this context, he certainly is. When you're working with a group of people to come up with some idea or innovation, you don't need to love each other. You don't even need to like each other. But as Aretha Franklin says, you certainly need to respect each other. Um, you have to find a way of interacting in a way that keeps the channels of communication open and that requires respect. So I'd like to mention that just to kind of bring the bar to a reasonable level. This is what this is what we're talking about and you can often very effectively collaborate with with people that you don't necessarily like all that much but as long as you're respectful to them in that context of collaboration you can collaborate effectively. Okay, so first of all, um, as we kind of think about this, I like to highlight that, that a big part, and, and the part I want to focus on um, that's most problematic in collaboration is, is where you have to combine receptive communication with critical thought. So what I mean by receptive communication is you are now listening to somebody else talk, let's say, about an idea that you put forward. So if you're a good receptive communicator, that means you are going to be able to shut up and first of all, listen to what that person is saying very carefully and think about what they're saying very carefully. So, you know, not trying to jump right in or go against them or whatever, shutting up, listening and thinking. And this is the part that I think is most challenging for most of us. It's not challenging, of course, when this person is saying something like this, who's awesome, you're awesome, right? When you're getting positive feedback on your ideas, well, it's quite nice to listen to that um, and, and think about that. But the tricky thing is, of course, the opposite situation. When you have somebody basically saying, okay, I understand what you're doing, but here's why I think your idea won't work, or here's why it's not good. This is when we encounter problems. And, and these problems really date back to the evolution, the literal evolution of our brain. Because when you're in a social situation and you have somebody critically analyzing your ideas, it's a dangerous kind of context. There's the danger that you might end up looking stupid, for lack of a better word. Um, and, and you don't want to look stupid in front of a bunch of other people. So as soon as we start to feel that, we feel a threat. And we have to realize, we have to remap that whole threat um, because when somebody is criticizing our idea, they are actually helping you or offering to help you improve that idea. So this is the, you know, the very first important thing I, I, I want to highlight is that critics are your best friend. And, you know, just like you had to remap that word impossible when we talked about moonshots and think, oh, something's impossible, then, then I want to think about it. Um, similarly, when somebody is being critical of your ideas, you should think about 
wow, I have a dance partner in a sense, a dance partner to think with. So this person is now, you know, taking issue with some of my things. Let's think about that together and let's work on it and let's see if we can improve that idea. And when you start seeing critical analysis that way, then, then it's really beneficial and you can really work well together. The problem is, of course, we don't. We see it as a threat. And, you know, just like this mouse right here is, is, is not really happy to collaborate with the cat, um, quite often when we feel somebody is threatening us in any way, including criticizing our idea, that invokes that fight or flight response, okay? We feel like, and these are very primitive parts of the brain, we feel like we need to defend ourselves. Um, and that triggers emotional states. In fact, uh, it's this part of the brain called the amygdala that actually its goal, I, I sometimes call it the spider sense, its goal or its job is to sense threat. And when it senses threat, it shuts down the prefrontal cortex. And this is the place where we do most of our deep rational thinking. It shuts that down and in fact kicks up our emotional response system and our fight and flight response. And basically the decision we're making is, do I take this person on or do I escape from the situation? Neither of those options are good in a collaborative context. You don't wanna leave and you don't wanna fight. You wanna listen, you wanna think, and you wanna work with this person. But you are fighting a very primitive system in the brain to do that. So this is the, the, the first point I want to um, kind of make with this is to collaborate well, you have to learn a little bit of emotional control. And if you look um, online, say YouTube, look for some videos, you can probably find videos that will do what's called relaxation training. They will teach you, you know, the, the stereotypical thing we had is like an angry parent who would count to 10 before they reacted. One, two, three. But that sort of notion where you can learn when your body is starting to react in that emotional defensive way and you can learn strategies to relax yourself back down again. And that's really critical to good collaboration to be able to listen to that feedback you're receiving in a dispassionate way. Um, and doing so requires some amount of training, learning to, to turn off the emotional response, learning that it's not useful. Uh, and therefore better not to have in this situation, okay? So here is now my sort of recipe, I guess, for effective collaboration. Um, whatever may happen, whether some response puts you on the happy side or the sad side, your first task is to get here, okay? Get to a calm, relaxed situation. When people are giving feedback on your ideas, you have to kind of learn to chill and keep your frontal lobes engaged. So you have to fight that fight or flight reflex, which sounds a little wrong, but you fight it by learning how to relax. So you can learn how to relax and learn how to bring yourself down. Once you've relaxed, listen very carefully to the feedback that you're getting. Think about it critically, not emotionally, critically. Like think about do the points that person's making make sense? If they're, if they're saying my idea doesn't work, are their criticisms valid? Are there things we should explore there? Not argue, but explore. You know, maybe I don't think their criticisms are valid. Maybe I have to think about this all a little bit. Um, but make sure you think as dispassionately as you can, preferably with your frontal lobes uh, working away. And here's something that, a step that I think most people miss that's really important for kind of solidifying all this. Tell that person back what they just told to you, okay? So really effective. They've, they've, uh, you put out an idea, they've critically analyzed it, given you some feedback. And so if you say, okay, I just want to make sure before, before we enter into the discussion, let me just make sure I understand what you're saying. What you're saying is the following, correct? And you recount it. Now, Doing so has a really powerful role. It diffuses emotion in the other person. One of the reasons our arguments with, our, with you know, spouses and whatever can get out of control is because one member or the other or both feel like they're not being heard. And as soon as you tell somebody, I heard you, this is what you said. I get it. I listened. I get it. I understand. 
then that diffuses the other person. It's like, okay, they heard me. Now you can go ahead and, and describe things that you might not agree with in what they said, but you're doing so in a context where you've showed them, shown, demonstrated to them that you've heard them. Um, and of course, you want to repeat this cycle. This is the cycle you would like everybody around the table to be engaged in. That when the ideas are out there, when a critic steps up, everybody should be quiet. Try to stay as emotionally balanced as they can. Listen, think about, and then discuss. Uh, sorry, reply. What did I just hear? And then maybe add on. If you can get this kind of spirit going, and with a good group of people, you will learn not to be offended by each other's critiques. Uh, and in fact, you will learn to realize that person's critique made my idea better. And once you start feeling that, then this all pays off. Okay, so thank you. Uh, I hope that was uh, helpful. And um, thanks again for the great opportunity, uh, Frank and Bob and all of you who created the Perfect Storm uh, event. It was really a fantastic event that I loved being part of. All right. Bye from Canada. Have a good one.